Well, are you ready to get into y'all's word today? I am as well. I want to encourage you to open your Bibles with me to Exodus chapter 11. And we're going to pick up with verse 2 in just a moment. We're tracking along with the Torah portion for this week. And the Torah portion is entitled Contribution. My message title today is The Torah Principle of Supernatural Giving. Did you realize that supernatural giving is rooted in the Torah? Many people don't realize that. But I tell you, when we read about supernatural giving in the apostolic writings, we must know that the root of supernatural giving is right there in the Torah. Yes, there is a new covenant equivalent, but supernatural giving begins in the Torah. And we're going to talk about that today. Let's begin with Exodus chapter 11. And verse 2, it says, Speak now in the hearing of the people, and let every man ask from his neighbor and every woman from her neighbor objects of silver and objects of gold. And Yah gave the people favor in the eyes of the Mitzrites. And the man Moshe was very great in the land of Mitzrayim, in the eyes of Pharaoh's servants, and in the eyes of the people. And so this is talking about the children of Israel being in Egypt. And Yah spoke to Moshe and said, Tell the people to go speak to the Mitzrites and ask of them gold and silver and precious items. And the scripture says that Moshe was very great in the land and in the eyes of Pharaoh's servants and in the eyes of the people. So we're going to find out that Yah gives the children of Israel favor in the eyes of the Mitzrites. Let's look at Exodus chapter 12 and pick up with verse 35. It says, And the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moshe, and they had asked from the Mitzrites objects of silver and objects of gold and garments. And Yah gave the people favor in the eyes of the Mitzrites, so that they gave them what they asked, and they plundered the Mitzrites. Isn't that interesting? Now, there's two reasons why this could have happened. One, the children of Israel were in bondage. They were in slavery, and they served the Mitzrites for many generations without receiving wages. And so this is Yah saying, you're going to pay my children what they deserve. The other thing to keep in mind is that Yah is blessing them with purpose. He has a purpose in mind. He has something that he wants to do in the future. And so the present blessing, receiving a blessing, is for purpose in the future. So let's keep that in mind as well. So they plundered the Mitzrites. I mean, they came out with the gold and the silver and the bronze and garments and all kinds of precious resources. I mean, they plundered the richest land in the world at that time. They came out with the wealth of Mitzrayim. They came out with the wealth of Egypt. They were a wealthy nation when they came out. And it was with purpose in mind. Yah had a purpose for all that wealth. When we get blessed, there's a purpose for our wealth as well. Let's go to Exodus chapter 25, and we'll start with verse 1. And notice here that Yah says, I want you, Moshe, to tell the people to bring me a contribution. I have a purpose. I want to do something. I want you to build me a dwelling place so that I can dwell in the midst of my people. Verse 1, And Yah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they take up a contribution... For me, from everyone whose heart moves him, you shall take up my contribution. Now, does Yah have a need? No, but he's inviting his people into his purpose, into his plan. He's drawing his people near. He wants them to participate. And notice it says, from everyone whose heart moves him. Now, you might think, well, that just means, you know, whoever wants to. It's deeper than that. Yah is moving by His Spirit. Yah is moving upon the hearts of His children. Those who are sensitive, those who are listening, are going to obey Him. 
It's a choice. Obedience is a choice. But this is something Yah is doing by his spirit. From everyone whose heart moves him, you shall take up my contribution. And this is the contribution which you take up from them, gold and silver and bronze and blue and purple and scarlet material and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skins dyed red and fine leather and acacia wood, oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense, shoham stones and stones to be set in the shoulder garment and in the breastplate, and they shall make me a set apart place, and I shall dwell in their midst. So they were blessed so that they could provide the resources for this purpose, this plan of Yah. He wants to dwell in their midst and He wants to engage them, invite them into the process, and He wants their hearts to be open and receptive as He speaks to their hearts by His Spirit as He moves upon them. He wants them to respond and to be generous because love is obedience. Love is giving. Love is having a desire to see the purposes of Yah accomplished. Yah wants to dwell in their midst and Yah wants them to obey this moving of His Spirit upon their hearts and participate in that purpose. Verse 9, according to all that I show you, the pattern of the dwelling place and the pattern of all its furnishings, make it exactly so. Now go with me over to Exodus chapter 35 and we'll pick up with verse 4. And I want to show you even more in scripture that Yah was moving on his people by his spirit. It says, and Moshe spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel saying, this is the word which Yah commanded, saying, Take from among you a contribution to Yah. Everyone whose heart so moves him, let him bring it as a contribution to Yah. In other words, every person who is sensitive enough to know that Yah is moving upon his heart by his spirit. From that person, you're to take up this contribution. It says gold and silver and bronze and blue and purple and scarlet material and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skins dyed red and fine leather and acacia wood. We talked about this list a little bit earlier in another verse and oil for the light and spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense and shoham stones and stones to be set in the shoulder garment and in the breastplate. And let all the wise hearted among you come and make all that Yah has commanded. So Yah is even going to move upon the people with wisdom. And the wise hearted were to come and to make all that Yah has commanded. The dwelling place, its tent and its covering, its hooks and its boards, its bars, its columns, and its sockets, the ark, and its poles, the lid of atonement, and the veil of the covering, the table, and its poles, and all its utensils, and the showbread, and the lampstand for the light, and its utensils, and its lamps, and the oil for the light, and the incense slaughter place, and its poles, and the anointing oil, and the sweet incense, and the covering for the door at the entrance of the dwelling place. Now I'm going to continue reading this, but I tell you what's really moving upon my heart is that Yah is inviting us, His people, into the details of His ministry, of what He wants to accomplish in the earth. And He wants us to be sensitive about every detail. And so often we get so busy in life, you know, and we're focused on other things that we're not as sensitive as we should be to the details of the mission of Yah that He has given us. And He's inviting His people into all these details. He wants us to be meticulous. He wants us to be sensitive. What is your desire for me? What do you want me to do? How can I participate in the mission that you have 
given us as your children. Verse 16, the slaughter place of the sending offering and its bronze grating, its poles and all its utensils, the basin and its stand, the screens of the courtyard, its columns and their sockets, and the covering for the gate of the courtyard, the pegs of the dwelling place and the pegs of the courtyard and their cords, the woven garments to do service in the set-apart place and the set-apart garments for Aharon, the priest and the garments of his sons to serve as priests. So many details. We need to pay attention to what Yah is saying to us in the days that we're living in. And all the congregation of the children of Israel withdrew from the presence of Moshe. In other words, they, they left the presence of Moshe. And everyone whose heart lifted him up. This is supernatural. This is something Yah is doing by his spirit. And everyone whose heart lifted him up. And everyone whose spirit moved him came. And they brought the contribution to Yah for the work of of the tent of appointment and for all its service and for the set apart garments. It's always that way. It's always the people who are sensitive enough to Yah, the people who have drawn near enough to Yah, who hear Yah by His Spirit and who respond. You think about the people who are supporting and giving to produce the wonderful purposes of Yah in the earth. They're providing the resources that are necessary. These are the people who are sensitive. These are the people who are into the details of what Yah is up to, what He wants from them. These are the people who are hearing Yah when He speaks by His Spirit to their hearts. It's always been that way, and it will always be that way. And if you say, well, I, I don't feel like I've participated enough, just grow sensitive, begin to pray, draw near, listen, be a person of detail. Hear the heart of Yah through his spirit and obey. Verse 22, and they came, both men and women, all whose hearts moved them and brought earrings and nose rings and rings and necklaces, all golden goods even everyone who made a wave offering of gold to Yah. So they were bringing it as an offering. They were lifting up their golden goods and waving it before Yah. I mean, it was a, it was a wave offering to Yah as they brought their gold. Verse 23, And every man with whom was found blue and purple and scarlet material and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skins, dyed red and fine leather, brought them. Now notice how many times it says brought them, brought them, brought them. Everyone who would make a contribution to Yah of silver or bronze brought it. And everyone with whom was found acacia wood for any work of the service brought it. See, this was a, a joyful time. They were giving joyfully. They were happy to do the work of Yah. They wanted to engage. They wanted to participate. It's not like trying to wring something out of somebody. These people are moved by Yah. His spirit is moving in their hearts and they are joyfully giving. This is wonderful. Verse 25. And all the wise hearted women spun yarn with their hands and brought what they had spun the blue and the purple, the scarlet material, and the fine linen. So Yah was moving on some of these wonderful women to, uh, to spin and to make this material that's necessary for the dwelling place. Verse 26, And all the women whose hearts lifted them up in wisdom spun the goat's hair, and the rulers brought shoham stones, and the stones to be set in the shoulder garment and in the breastplate and the spices and the oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense. The children of Israel brought a voluntary offering to Yah. They were moved by Yah. 
They were moved in their hearts by the Spirit of Yah, and they wanted to bring it. They wanted to give. That's how you know that you're operating in supernatural giving, when you want to give. You're not holding back. You're not running numbers. You're not trying to think, well, you know, how much can I afford? You're giving joyfully. It says they brought a voluntary offering to Yah, all the men and women whose hearts moved them to bring all kinds of work which Yah, by the hand of Moshe, had commanded to be done. And Moshe said to the children of Israel, See, Yah has called by name Betzalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Yehuda, and he has filled him with the spirit of Elohim in wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all work to make designs, to work in gold and in silver and in bronze and in cutting of stones for setting and in carving wood and to work in all workmanship of design. And he has put in his heart the ability to teach in him. And Oholiab, son of Ahisamach, of the tribe of Don, he has filled them with skill to do all work of the engraver and the designer and embroiderer in blue and in purple, in scarlet material and in fine linen, and a weaver doing any work, and makers of designs. And so this is Yah moving by His Spirit, moving upon the people to bring this contribution, moving upon the people with wisdom to be able to produce these materials, moving upon the craftsmen to be able to build this wonderful dwelling place of Yah, because Yah said, I want to dwell in the midst of the people. Now, go with me over to Exodus chapter 36. We'll pick up with verse 1. And this is a miracle, what we see here. This is talking about how the children of Israel brought more than enough. Is it possible? Well, it happened right there in the Torah. Let's look at verse 1. And Betzal El and Aholiab and every wise-hearted man in whom Yah has given wisdom and understanding to know how to do all work for the service of the set-apart place shall do according to all that Yah has commanded. And Moshe called Betzalel and Aholiab and every wise-hearted man in whose heart Yah had given wisdom, everyone whose heart lifted him up to come and do the work. See, they're being lifted up. Their hearts are being moved. Verse 3, And they received from Moshe all the contribution which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of making the set-apart place. But they still brought to him voluntarily offerings every morning. They just kept bringing it. There was this constant flow of offerings. So all the craftsmen who were doing all the work of the set-apart place came each from his work he was doing, and they spoke to Moshe, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which Yah commanded us to do. The people are bringing much more than enough. That's supernatural giving. That's miraculous. Verse 6, Then Moshe commanded, and they sent this word throughout the camp, saying, let neither man nor woman do any more work for the contribution of the set-apart place. And the people were withheld from bringing. In other words, don't give any more. Don't do any more work. Don't bring any more offerings. For what they had was enough for all the work to be done more than enough. That's how you know that it's supernatural. When you have more than enough enough. And then go with me over to Exodus chapter 40 and we'll pick up with verse 33. And this tells us that they completed the work and the esteem of Yah filled 
the dwelling place. It says, and he raised up the courtyard all around the dwelling place and the slaughter place and placed the covering of the courtyard gate. And Moshe completed the work and the cloud covered the tent of appointment and the esteem of Yah filled the dwelling place. And Moshe was not able to come into the tent of appointment because the cloud dwelt on it and the esteem of Yah filled the dwelling place. So obviously, Yah was pleased with the response of the people when he has a purpose, when he has a plan, when he wants to accomplish a mission, when he wants to do something in the earth. He invites his children to engage. He doesn't need anything, but he invites his children to engage when they listen, when they become meticulous, when they become all about the details, when they're sensitive, when they have a mission before them and they're trying to find ways that they can meet the need and they do and they're obedient. Then we see that the esteem of Yah will just come and you will sense his presence and you will sense that you have pleased him because the very purpose that he's invited you into is accomplished. Hallelujah. Now, there is a new covenant equivalent to this. We're talking about a principle of supernatural giving that is founded in the Torah. But we have an equivalent to that in the writings of the emissaries. And so I want you to go with me over to Acts chapter 2, and we'll pick up with verse 1. It says, And when the day of the festival of Shavuot had come, they were all with one mind in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from the heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. This is talking about the outpouring of the spirit of Yah. Yah is pouring out his spirit upon his people. This is the first Shavuot after the death, burial, and resurrection of Yeshua. And there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and settled on each one of them. Notice, and they were all filled with the set-apart spirit. You could say the set-apart spirit of Yah was moving upon them, was filling them, was moving upon their hearts, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them to speak. Yeshua said, go into all the world and proclaim this good news message of the reign of Elohim. But he said, don't go anywhere, don't do anything, don't preach any sermons, don't try to cast out any demons, don't lay your hands on any sick people, don't do anything until you are endued with power from on high, until you receive the promise of the Father, the promise of the indwelling Spirit of Yah. Yah said, I'm going to pour out my Spirit upon my children. And so the purpose was to preach to all the nations. And so when the spirit of Yah was poured out upon the people, they began to speak. They began to speak the good news of Yeshua. They began to proclaim the Torah in languages that they had never learned. Now look at verse 14. It says, But Kepha, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said to them, Men of Yehudah and all those dwelling in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen closely to my words, for these men are not drunk, as you imagine, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Yoel. It shall be in the last days, says Elohim, that I shall pour out my spirit on all flesh, on all believers. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, shall proclaim, shall preach. And your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. I'm going to communicate through the young people with visions, I'm going to communicate with the older people with dreams. And also on my male servants and on my female servants, I shall pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. You remember when we talked about earlier how Yah invites his children into his purpose and Yeshua said, go and preach. Go and preach the reign of Elohim. Go and preach about me. Go and preach about redemption. Teshuvah in all the nations. And then they're being filled with the Spirit. Yah's moving upon their hearts with His Spirit. And they're prophesying. They're speaking the good news of Yah, the good news of Yeshua, in all these languages that they had never learned. 
And I shall show wonders in the heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and splendid day of Yah. Here it is. And it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of Yah shall be saved. Hallelujah. Look at verse 22. Men of Israel, hear these words. Yeshua of Nazareth, a man from Elohim, having been pointed out to you by mighty works and wonders and signs which Elohim did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know, this one, Yeshua, given up by the set purpose and foreknowledge of Elohim, you have impaled and put to death through the hands of lawless men. Him, Elohim, raised up, having loosed the pangs of death, because it was impossible that he could be held in its grip. Now look at verse 36. Therefore let all the house of Israel know for certain that Elohim has made this Yeshua, whom you impaled, both Master and Messiah. And having heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Kepha and the rest of the emissaries, Men, brothers, what shall we do? And Kepha said to them, Repent, and let each one of you be immersed in the name of Yeshua Messiah for the forgiveness of sins, baptized in water, and you shall receive the gift of the set-apart spirit. So you also are going to be moved by the spirit. You're going to receive the gift of the indwelling set-apart spirit of Yah. Yah is going to put his spirit on you. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as Yah our Elohim shall call. And with many other words, he earnestly witnessed and urged them saying, be saved from this crooked generation. Notice, then those Indeed, who gladly received his word were immersed. They were baptized. And on that day, about 3,000 beings were added to them. 3,000 beings were added to them. 3,000 beings then could pray to receive the gift of the indwelling set-apart spirit. 3,000 beings could have the spirit of Yah moving upon their hearts to do supernatural things. Keep that in mind. It says, and they were continuing steadfastly in the teaching of the emissaries. They wanted to be taught and in the fellowship and in the breaking of bread. They were eating meals together and in the prayers and fear came upon every being. And many wonders and signs were done through the emissaries and all those who believed were together. They were unified and had all in common. They shared a common purpose. They shared a common mission. They shared a common fellowship. They were unified in the spirit of Yah. Hallelujah. They were together and had all in common. Notice, and sold their possessions and property and divided them among all as anyone might have need. And this is not talking about communism. This was something that Yah was doing by his spirit. The people were impassioned. They, they saw the need in the midst of the people. They saw how there was poverty in their midst. And they sold their possessions because they wanted to. Because the spirit was moving upon them. Yah was moving by his spirit. And the compassion of Yeshua the love of Yah, we're going to look at that verse here in just a moment, stirred them so much they wanted to give. They wanted to meet the needs of the people. And so they sold their possessions and property. And they divided them among all. They took the proceeds and they met the need. We're going to find out here in just a moment that they stamped out poverty in their body. There was no lack among the people because of this supernatural giving at this time. It says, and sold their possessions and property and divided them among all as anyone might have need. And day by day, continuing with one mind in the set apart place and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising Elohim and having favor with all the people. 
And the master added to the assembly those who were being saved day by day. And so something was happening, and we know what it, what it was. Yah was moving by his spirit. Now I want to bring the comparison of that original supernatural giving moment in the Torah and what was happening here after Yeshua died, was buried and raised on that first Shavuot and then following. Yah's spirit was moving on the people. They saw the need. They had compassion. And they wanted to give. They wanted to meet the needs of the people. You see, under the Torah, the need was that Yah wanted Moshe and the children of Israel to build a dwelling place in the wilderness so that he could dwell in their midst. So they were building a literal dwelling place. But under the new covenant, we're, we're not talking about building a place, a house or, or a building of some sort. We're talking about building the body of Mashiach, building the people. There's a new dwelling place in the new covenant. And it's the people. We're going to read about that here in just a moment. And so we have the same dynamic of supernatural giving, but it's not talking about giving toward building a building or a dwelling place that is literal. It's talking about building people who become stone upon stone, the dwelling place of Elohim. Hallelujah. Look at Acts chapter 4. And we'll pick up with verse 32. This tells us that believers met the needs of the people of the congregation of Yah. And the people together in unity become the dwelling place of Yah. It says, and the group of those who believed were of one heart and one being. And no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own. And this was Totally voluntary. This was a free will offering. People that sold their possessions and their property, they did that because they wanted to. It says, but they had all in common, verse 33, and with great power the emissaries gave witness to the resurrection of the Master Yeshua, and great favor was upon them all, for there was not anyone needy among them. That's what I was talking about. They stamped out the poverty in this period, in that early congregation. It says there was no one who was needy. And that made the congregation of belief very attractive to people looking from the outside. They cared for one another. They loved one another. They met the needs of the people. There was no one who was needy among them. For all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of what was sold. This is talking about an extra house. You know, it's talking about properties that they weren't using. They had a surplus. So they sold those things and they brought the prices of what was sold and laid them at the feet of the emissaries. And they distributed to each as anyone had need. Again, they're building the new dwelling place. The new dwelling place is the congregation of belief. People. They're building people. And so they're moved by the Spirit. They're selling properties. They're selling extra homes that they might have had. And laying that money at the feet of the emissaries. And the emissaries then distributed to each one as anyone had need. It says, and Yosef, who was also called Barnaba by the emissaries, which means son of encouragement, a Levite, a native of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the feet of the emissaries. And so it may be that Yosef was the first one that was moved upon by Yah, by his spirit. And he did this wonderful act of, of giving, of love. He had land. He sold the land. He brought the money and he laid it at the feet of the emissaries. And of course, they stamped out poverty in the body of believers at that time. Now, go with me over to Ephesians chapter 2. We'll pick up with verse 17. And this is talking about 
supporting the dwelling place of Yah. It's a new dwelling place. We're talking about the new dwelling place of Yah under the new covenant. We're talking about the congregation of believers. It says, And having come, he brought as good news peace to you who were far off, those of you who were in the nations, and peace to those near, the Yehudim, because through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. So then you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens of the set-apart ones and members of the household of Elohim, having been built upon the foundation of of the emissaries and prophets, in other words, the foundation that the emissaries and prophets built, Yeshua, Messiah, himself, being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building, we're talking about believers, being joined together, grows into a set-apart dwelling place, the, the new dwelling place of Yah in whom all the building being joined together grows into a set-apart dwelling place in Yah, in whom you also are being built together into a dwelling of Elohim in the Spirit. Hallelujah. And then look with me at 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning with verse 4. It says, Drawing near to Him a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by Elohim and precious, speaking of Yeshua, you also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a set-apart priesthood to offer up spiritual slaughter offerings acceptable to Elohim through Yeshua Messiah. And so we're stone upon stone being built up as the dwelling place of Elohim. So... Let's look at Romans chapter 5, and we'll look at verse 5. And this is a very powerful passage. And this tells us that the love of Yah has been placed in each believer. It says, an expectation does not disappoint because the love of Elohim has been poured out in our hearts by the set-apart spirit which was given to us. So how did these early believers... How were they moved to do such a tremendous act of love and giving and charity that they would sell properties and possessions and bring the money to the emissaries? And the emissaries then would distribute to all of the flock if they had need. And they stamped out poverty in their midst in those days. How did that happen? Because when they believed upon Yeshua and they were filled with the spirit of Yah, Yah placed his spirit upon them. They received the love of Elohim. It's a supernatural kind of love, which is a self-sacrificing type of love. And it's that love that empowered them to give the way that they did to build this new dwelling place of Yah, the people, the believers in Yeshua. Matthew chapter 9, beginning with verse 35, says... And Yeshua went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their congregations and proclaiming the good news of the reign and healing every disease and every bodily weakness among the people. Notice, and having seen the crowds, he saw them differently. He saw them through the eyes of Yah. He was moved with compassion for them. That's what happened in those early days with the believers. They saw the need. They were moved with compassion because they were weary and scattered as sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his taught ones, the harvest truly is great, but the workers are few. Pray then that the master of the harvest would send out workers to his harvest. And of course, they began to pray. And after they prayed, then Yeshua sent them out into the harvest field. But Yeshua himself was moved with the compassion of Elohim. He was anointed by the spirit of Elohim. And Elohim placed his love within Yeshua. And he was moved with compassion for the masses because they were weary and scattered as sheep having no shepherd. The same dynamic takes place in every believer who will allow it. 
Every believer who is sensitive to Yah by His Spirit, the moving of Yah in their hearts, will see the need. They'll be moved in their spirits and in their hearts because of the great need, the masses of people who have not yet called upon the name of Yeshua and performed Teshuvah. These believers who receive the Spirit of Yah will be tender toward the purpose of Yah and the mission of Yah and meticulous about the details of Yah and want to engage with Yah. Hallelujah. So that many, many, many more people worldwide will come to believe in Yeshua and so that the house of Yah will be built and Yah will dwell in the midst of His people. Go with me over to Mark chapter 12. We'll start with verse 41. And this is going to give us an example of someone who gave out of love. It says, And sitting opposite the treasury, he, Yeshua, saw how the people put copper into the treasury, and many rich ones put in much. And a poor widow came and threw in two small copper coins, which amount to a cent. And calling near his taught ones, he said to them, Truly I say to you, that this poor widow has put in more than all those putting into the treasury. For they all put in out of their excess. But she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had, her entire livelihood. She gave everything she had. How does someone do that? How is someone enabled, empowered to do that? They have a deep love for Elohim. They have a deep trust in Elohim. A lot of people don't give what they could because they don't trust like they should. They're hanging on because they feel like they have to provide for their needs. When the scripture says that Yah will provide all of our needs according to His riches and esteem by Yeshua Messiah. She loved Elohim so much that she gave everything she had. That's the point that we're making right now. Giving out of love. When you love, you want to give. It's supernatural. And of course, Yah is going to take care of those who love Him in that way. Now, we will visit for just a moment this story about a couple who had a wrong attitude about giving. I don't want to make this the emphasis but I do want to see if we can't glean something from this passage. Acts chapter 5, beginning with verse 1. It says, But a certain man named Hananiah and Shapirah, his wife, sold a possession. So now they're doing the same thing as the others, but they had a wrong attitude. And he kept back from the price. In other words, he didn't bring the full price. He kept back. From the price. His wife also being aware of it. So they were in it together. And brought a certain part. And laid it at the feet of the emissaries. But Kepha said. Hananiah. Why has Satan filled your heart. To lie to the set apart spirit. And keep back from the price of the land. For yourself. So the sin. Was not that he didn't give the full amount. The sin was that he lied about it. He lied about it. Verse 4, While it remained, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your authority? In other words, you could do with it what you want. Why have you conceived this deed in your heart to lie about it? You have not lied to men, but to Elohim. Then Hananiah heard these words, fell down and breathed his last. It was instant judgment. And great fear came upon all those who heard of this. And the young men arose and wrapped him up and carried him out and buried him. And it came to be about three hours later that his wife came in, not knowing what had taken place. And Kepha responded to her, Say to me whether you sold the land for so much. 
In other words, is this the real price that you sold the land for? And she said, yes, for so much. So Kepha said to her, why have you agreed to try the spirit of Yah? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they shall carry you out. And immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her out, they buried her beside her husband and great fear came upon all the assembly and upon all who heard of this. So this was a mockery. They weren't giving because they were moved spiritually. They were moved by Yah through his spirit. They wanted some attention. They wanted to get credit. And so they sold a property for a certain amount. They kept a portion back, but then they said, no, this is all of it. We're giving all of it to Elohim. And by the spirit of Yah, Kepha responded to that. And there was an instant judgment. This is an example of somebody who has a wrong attitude about giving. Now, most people aren't lying about the amount they give when they have a wrong attitude about giving. Most people just don't give. And they find reasons not to give. They'll even search around in the scripture and find a verse that they will twist and make it say something that it doesn't say to give them a reason not to give. And so I just want to, I want to encourage you. Be one who is open to be moved by Yah through His Spirit so that you joyfully give, so that you want to give, so that you're meticulous about the details of the ministry that Yah has spoken to you or placed upon your heart. And you want to give because you're filled with the love of Elohim. Because you're moving with compassion toward the masses that you know need to hear the message of Yeshua. That's why we give. Don't have a wrong attitude about giving. There's no blessings when our attitudes are wrong about giving. And when we teach others, you know, well, there's no tithe under the new covenant. Well, the, the tithe started with Abraham before Moshe before there was the giving of the Torah. It's an Abrahamic principle, just like salvation through belief unto obedience. So if you are glad for that principle, that we believe under justification, which leads us to obedience, that started with Abraham then tithing also is a principle that started with Abraham. And Yeshua said, if you are sons of Abraham, you'll do what Abraham did. And so let's have a right attitude toward giving. All right, go with me over to Matthew chapter 23. We'll pick up with verse 23. And this tells us that Yeshua promoted biblical giving. He promoted the type of giving that is written of in the Torah. Verse 23, this is Yeshua speaking. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you tithe the mint, little tiny seed, and the anise and the cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the Torah, the right ruling and the compassion and the belief. These need to have been done. In other words, tithing needs to be done. Yeshua said you need to tithe but without neglecting the others. So they were tithing the little tiny seeds, but they were neglecting very large matters of the Torah, the right ruling, the compassion, and the belief. And Yeshua said you need to tithe without neglecting the other matters. And then he also gives us an example of giving being a way of life, a lifestyle. In Luke chapter 6, Verse 38, Yeshua said, give and it shall be given to you. A good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over shall be put into your lap. For with the same measure 
with which you measure, it shall be measured back to you. And so Yeshua says, this is the type of lifestyle that his followers ought to have. We ought to be givers. And he says, if you give, you're going to receive the blessing of the giving. We don't give to get. But when we give because we're filled with the love of Elohim, when we give because we want to participate in the mission of Yeshua, when we give because we want to engage in the purposes of Yah, when we give because we're meticulous about the needs of the ministry, when we give because our hearts are moved, our hearts are lifted, our spirits are moved, we want to engage, we want to be a part, we want to see people get blessed. When we give because of that, then we will receive a blessing back. We will be blessed. Yeshua said, it's more blessed. You're going to get more blessings when you give than if all you're ever doing is looking to receive, trying to find how you can receive from others. Give and it shall be given to you a good measure. Press down, shaken together, and running over shall be put into your lap. This is talking about the blessings that come when we give joyfully. For with the same measure with which you measure, in other words, if you give bountifully, you'll receive bountifully. It shall be measured back to you. If you give greatly because of the love that you have in your heart, because you're stirred up, because you're moved, because you're meticulous about the need, because you want others to be blessed, then Yeshua said the blessings are going to come back to you in the same measure that you give. And then go with me over to Romans chapter 10. We'll pick up with verse 13. This is talking about giving to support the purposes of Yah. Shaul writes here, For everyone who calls on the name of Yah shall be saved. How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? So you can't call upon Yeshua. You can't call upon Yah if you haven't believed that Yeshua is the Son of Yah. And how shall they believe in Him of whom they have not heard? And you can't believe in someone you've not heard of. And how shall they hear without one proclaiming? So you can't hear unless somebody's preaching, someone's proclaiming. And how shall they proclaim if they are not sent, there has to be a sending agent. There has to be someone who sends. We know that Elohim sends, but we also know that congregations of people and individuals also provide the resources necessary for a person or a ministry to go. And so Shaul is saying, and how shall they proclaim if they are not sent? As it has been written, how pleasant are the feet of those who bring the good news of peace, who bring the good news of the good. And so this tells us that when we get filled with the love of Elohim and we're moved with compassion toward the masses who are weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd, as Yeshua was, then we want to be a part of of the purpose of Yah. We want to engage in the ministry of Yeshua. And we can become that person or that body of believers. We could participate with that group in sending out the ministry. Sending out those who are proclaiming the good news week in, week out. Hallelujah. And of course, when you do that, the blessings, the blessings will overtake you. Go with me over to Philippians chapter 4. We pick up with verse 15 here. It says, And you know too, Philippians, that in the beginning of the good news, when I went out from Macedonia, no assembly shared with me concerning giving and receiving, except you only. So he's, he's praising the Philippians because at that time, they were the only ones who were giving joyfully because their hearts were moved by the Spirit of Yah to support Shaul's ministry. 
Verse 16, because even in Thessaloniki, you sent to my need once and twice. He's saying you provided my need not only once, but twice. Not that I seek the gift. Of course, he's focused on Elohim providing his needs, but Elohim engages people, his children. I want you to support Shaul in the ministry that I've called him to. And so the congregation in Philippi, the Philippians, they responded to Yah by His Spirit, moving upon their hearts, and they gave with joy. They provided for the ministry that Shaul had been called to, not once, but twice. He says, not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that is multiplying to your account. They're not giving because they want fruit multiplied to their account. They're giving because they're moved supernaturally, moved by the Spirit of Yah. Moved and they, they care about the masses. They have the love of Elohim and the compassion of Yeshua. And they want to be a part of the purpose of Yah. And so they're, they're sowing into or they're giving, they're supporting the ministry that Shaul was called to. And when they do that, Shaul says, I seek the fruit that is multiplying to your account. The blessings. Yeshua said it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. So when you give, then the blessings are multiplied to your account. Verse 18. Indeed, I have all. This is Shaul saying, I have all that I need. And more than enough. Isn't that what they said in the Torah? Moshe had to tell the people, don't give anymore. We have all and more than enough. We have all and more than enough. And that's how it ought to be with the children of Elohim, the believers in Yeshua in the day that we're living in, having Yah's Spirit living in us and moving upon us. When we have Elohim called ministries, their testimony ought to be, we have all that we need and more than enough. Hallelujah. Because it's a Torah principle. It's rooted and founded in the Torah. And it has its new covenant equivalent. Hallelujah. I have been filled, having received from Epaphroditos what you sent. A sweet smelling fragrance. A sweet smelling fragrance. It's a beautiful offering when we give. It's like an offering. It is a sweet-smelling fragrance to Yah. An acceptable offering, well-pleasing to Elohim. And my Elohim shall fill all your need because you're a giver, because you care about people, because you're filled with the love of Elohim and the compassion of Yeshua, because you want to engage in the ministry. My Elohim shall fill all your need according to his riches in esteem by Messiah Yeshua. And to our Elohim and Father be esteemed forever and ever. Amen. And so Shaul is just simply saying what Yeshua always said. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. And because you've given in the way that you have to support the ministry that I've been called to, then my Elohim shall fill all your need according to his riches, not according to man, not according to your job, not according to your paycheck, but according to his riches in esteem by Messiah Yeshua. So this is an awesome, awesome principle that we're talking about that's rooted in the Torah Supernatural giving is a Torah principle. And I want to encourage you who believe in Yeshua and who follow in Yeshua's Torah lifestyle to have the right attitude about giving, to expect the supernatural in your life, to expect to be moved upon in your heart and in your spirit by the Spirit of Yah and to be empowered with the love of Elohim and the compassion of Yeshua, to get into the details of the ministry and to give 
joyfully a free will offering as led by the Spirit. Tithe your income to a local congregation or a ministry that's blessing you. Give over and above to missions and outreaches. And when you do, Shaul said, and I agree, because I agree with Scripture, that my Elohim shall provide all your need according to his riches and esteem by Yeshua, Messiah. Hallelujah.